My goal has always been to measure myself against the very best people in the world in any chosen field. I started in journalism and I worked at the Canadian press. I covered sports and I went to the Nagano Olympics, the greatest Olympics I've ever seen. I've been to half a dozen of them. And I broke the biggest story in the world about Ross Rebliati losing his gold medal because he had smoked marijuana. First guy in the world. And then a few months after that, I realized journalism isn't for me. I wasn't born to talk about what other people are doing. I need to do stuff. And I also find there's so much negativity in the media today that I can't be part of it because I'm too positive a person or I'm trying to be too positive a person. So I spent two years on a buddy's sofa. I worked at Unamas as a bus boy. Unamas was a bar in Toronto and I emptied ashtrays and picked up empty glasses. It was quite a fall. You want to talk about humility? That's humility. And I learned photography during those years. And then I went to Parliament Hill and I became chief of media relations for the government of Canada. And I applied for this job and I was the only person who applied and I found out why. <laughs> That's how I got that job. Because the sponsorship scandal was about to break and everybody except for me knew it. But I came out unscathed. And that led to the Prime Minister's Office of Canada where I worked for the Right Honourable Paul Martin for a year. But I quickly realized politics isn't right for a guy like me either, because I don't like to bullshit people and I don't like to lie to people. And so I went on and I left and I, I joined Cassette and I thank you Cassette for, uh, for making this possible. Worked at Bleu Blanc Rouge and then Sid Lee as a partner. In between there I went to Europe to support my wife who is one of the most awesomest basketball players you'll ever see play. And so I took a year off and I went to be a hoop wife, which was awesome. <laughs> And uh, I've been very lucky to be working with great people uh, in all those different places. And then a year and a half ago, I quit, I left, and I went on my own. And it's because this is what I want to become. I want to become a modern version of a Renaissance man. When I said this to Francis, he said, oh, you should start with that. <laughs> and I went, I went, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm trying to become one of the best multimedia storytellers in the world, and that's my goal. And people laugh at me sometimes. I want to get on Jimmy Fallon. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but that's how I think. I think if I do things right, and within a few years, I'm going to be up there on Jimmy Fallon and he's going to pie me in the face. I'm going to be the happiest guy in the world. <laughs> but so to get prepared for today, I started talking about, you know, with my friends, my family, that I was going to give a talk on humility. And this is how they reacted. <laughs> Every single one of them, including my parents, Jean-Pierre and Suzanne. Only one who didn't laugh was Al Pacino. He is a very serious person. <laughs> Um, but I quickly realized that I don't know shit about humility. If I knew, these people wouldn't be laughing. So I did what I always do when I don't know something about a subject. I did a little research. Whoops. There. I did a little research and I looked up what humility is all about. And this is what I found. The first thing I found is the act of lowering oneself in relation to others. Well, you know what? No thanks. If that's what humility is, I'm not interested in it. And I don't think you should be interested in it either.